This is what I would call the Apple product of woodworking. The packaging is meticulously designed, even featuring a peel-off section that requires no cutting tool to open. You won't find anything like this on the market. It checks all the boxes and remains budget-friendly at 250 bucks. Just to clarify, this isn't an ad, it's a review. I previously used a model from the same brand in my workbench project and loved its unique features. Now we have a newer iteration. This product is straightforward for simple tasks, but still has the capacity for more complex projects. Exactly what you need when you don't have a dedicated workshop. It can replace several machines, but more on that shortly. Upon opening, the first thing you notice is the quality of materials. It feels almost too premium to attach to my Milwaukee. The case is fancy enough to take to a Starbucks meeting. Plus there are little extras, like this keychain. The company has a diagram on their Kickstarter page highlighting 10 features, but I want to add two more that other jigs often lack, materials and compatibility. These are significant factors. Let me explain. Regarding materials, I've already mentioned the impressive packaging quality. You can tell it's a premium product when even the case has more design thought than many other trim router jigs themselves. The standout feature is the aluminum. It glides smoothly and feels robust, safe and rigid, unlike acrylic. How can you trust your precious fingers to acrylic? And beyond safety, metal's robustness ensures precision. Acrylic jigs are simply too unreliable. This one is built to last. As for compatibility, these plates don't require custom fabrication. They are designed to fit most routers. I happen to own routers from two different brands. And with this product, I not only get a jig, but also an extra plate for setting up as a router table. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, weren't you just criticizing acrylic and now you're suggesting this? But let me clarify. This is polycarbonate, which is 14 times more impact resistant than acrylic. Now let's dive into the other 10 points outlined in that diagram. Here is how to use it as a router table. The jig comes with templates to prepare your setup. If you have the space and plan to use it frequently, you can create a dedicated surface. In my case, I prefer a removable surface. It's incredibly convenient. And guess what's even more convenient? This. If you've already milled your board for a smaller panel, don't worry, it's designed to be milled on top of the smaller one. Just download the files, print them out, and voila, you're set with a mini fence that includes dust collection. I have already shown you two ways to occupy this hole, with the jig and with these printable files. Third way is just simple printable cover. And all of these covers are fixed with four bolts. As you can see, these threaded holes can be used for different custom additions. What's fantastic about this system is that the possibilities for customization are endless. For instance, I recently needed to create 100 discs with a consistent chamfer. A simple fence wouldn't suffice, so I designed a tiny custom one. Check it out. These customizable features are part of what makes this product so versatile. You can create as many accessories as you need. Let me know in the comments what would you make as an accessory. I've always wanted to test it out myself. And I was impressed. It offers an extra layer of safety compared to acrylic jigs. This stability is crucial, especially when making chamfers. You won't have to worry about it tipping over. Still, exercise caution. After all, there is a blade spinning at high speeds. If there is one question this jig answers, it's how do you cut circles? There are numerous methods to achieve this with this jig. I'm going to show three different methods. Two of them use this disc. We drill the hole and screw in a bolt to fix this disc on a board. Then we adjust the jig to achieve a desired radius of a circle. The setup you see here is for milling a circle with the biggest diameter. As you can see, it was super easy to cut. Next up, we set everything up to cut the smallest circle possible on this jig. We take this bolt and screw it in the black part of the jig. 
Next, we have to put the black part the wrong way in and as close as possible to a router bit. Now all what's left to do is to prepare a hole for the bolt and start milling. The only difficult part is to control the vacuum cleaner. This is actually a problem that caused me the most headache throughout my experience with the router. I've constantly been distracted by it. I had to be extra careful with its holes. This is what we're gonna need for our next method. We use that disc again. We have to attach it to the center of the block. Those two knobs have the same thickness as the polycarbonate block, so that the jig is leveled. Most methods require drilling a hole in the center, but you can also bypass that by using tape. Transparency of the block allows to place it precisely where we have marks. After preparing everything, we attach the notorious vacuum cleaner back and get started. Soon after starting, I realized that I got something wrong. In just a minute, I reassembled it to have a handle where it has to be. And those knobs changed place so that they stay on the ground. I thought it was perfectly set up and I will have a smooth circle cutting. But I messed up once again. I don't really know what happened here. But anyways, I keep going and finish up without any more mistakes. The smallest circle you can make is about 2.5 cm and the largest one is 80 cm. And speaking of measurements, this guide features a laser engraved ruler, useful for tasks like making dados or tenons. Another essential accessory for creating dados and tenons is this piece. I haven't seen this feature anywhere else. When preparing a board for a T-slot, a standard jig can make finishing difficult. It's possible, especially for skilled users, but still tricky. This accessory makes it easier. Loosen the bolt and rotate it 45 degrees and you can finish the edge much more easily. You can even flip it around if you're having trouble starting. And here's one more situation where this ruler thing comes in handy. This accessory is also needed for flush trimming. Just attach these two knobs and adjust the block to a desired position. It's user friendly. The only challenge is setting the bit depths correctly to avoid mishaps like I did. Here is a practical situation where you could need this function. I've built this workbench with a vise, but it's a little higher than the tabletop. So we just have to set the router bit on top of the tabletop and start milling. This feature is pretty straightforward. You can use this included accessory with Makita, Bosch or other rail guides. They are handy for tasks like creating a T-slot far from the edge of your workbench. Just set up the rail guide and you are good to go. Again, super useful feature for micro adjustments. You can use this ruler or you could use simple pencil markings. Either way gets the job done, which in this case could be a T-slot. This piece has two more different functions. I will talk about one of them later. But here's how you can use it for better stability while making dados. You can see how messy it can get with routers. Of course, dust collection is a must. You'll need to try to appreciate how easy it is to attach and remove. It works remarkably well, keeping the workspace clear Plus the ability to rotate your router 90 degrees allows for optimal placement. Up to this point it was unnecessary to center your router. But these two next features require centering. In order to do that, grab these items and attach them like I do here. If your bolt is a little loose, just wrap up a couple of layers with simple tape. After making sure the aluminum bolt is properly centered, we can tighten everything up. Now we can reassemble it with the necessary router bit. In this case, a straight bit that we will use for mortises. We'll need two of these black pins and as promised, one more function for this transparent part. There is useful text that looks a little bit complicated at the first glance, but it's actually clear after a single use. We'll look for mortises this time. This is the only troublesome feature of them all. It was a little tricky to set it up to mill exactly in the center. 
After a few attempts, I managed to make an almost perfect mortise. With some practice, I'm sure I will have them perfect every time. Troubles go away once you set the jig up in your table. This way is much easier and safer, but you probably can't mill the taller pieces. At least I'm not gonna recommend it. Finally, working with bushings is essential. And this jig, it comes with one as a bonus. You remove a router from a holster to access the second half of a bushing. Tighten it up and bring the router back. We have to look for these lock texts and use two of the given bolts to lock the jig down. Some tape and an MDF piece to use as a template and we are good to go. It works seamlessly, adding more capabilities to your router. You can find the link below. Let me know if you already have one. Also, if you have any suggestions, drop a comment. You should get one for yourself while they are at 250 bucks. I am suggesting to raise the price, because it costs almost like those bad quality acrylic jigs, but it's capable of much much more, plus the quality and materials. Anyways, thank you. Thank you.